Picture a factory floor bigger than four soccer fields piled high with plastic bottles. Every day, machines and workers in China take 1.5 million empty bottles and turn them into soft, colorful clothing you wear. In just minutes, bottles are sorted, shredded, washed, melted, and spun into yarn. But behind this speed lies a hidden fight. Brands want cheap fabric, workers want fair pay, and the planet pays a price. Stay with us to see how bottles become shirts and who wins in this race to recycle. Before dawn, long trucks roll in from cities and towns. Each truck carries thousands of clear, green, and blue plastic bottles. At the factory gate, big dumpers lift their beds and spill bottles onto moving floors. The floor shakes so dirt, sand, and tiny bits of trash fall through holes. Workers in bright vests and gloves walk the lines. They pull out glass, stones, or wrong plastics by hand. This first step keeps the line from jamming and ensures only bottles move forward. Next, bottles ride rollers under high-speed air jets that puff out caps, labels, and small bits of paper. Some caps hide under labels, so infrared eyes scan each bottle. If a cap or label patch stays, tiny air blasts knock it free. Any leftover parts fall onto side chutes for other factories. The pet to bottles stay on the main belt, this takes seconds but cuts errors to near zero. Now, bottles reach the chopper. Giant round blades spin like pizza cutters. They slice bottles into long strips. The strips drop into a drum flaker. Inside, metal hammers buzz against walls, beating strips into small flakes. The drum scours the plastic until each flake is about the size of a fingernail. Every few minutes, an operator listens and checks for big chunks. If found, they clear them out by hand. After this rough cut, flakes pass through a shaker. This big sieve sorts sizes. Large flakes bounce back for one more cut. Perfect flakes fall below onto a clear belt. This belt moves flakes into the wash system. At each step, a tiny camera checks flake color and size. If flakes look wrong, a red light blinks and a worker checks the belt. Clean flakes tumble down slides into a tunnel wash. Powerful jets spray hot water from all sides. Flakes spin in the spray like in a car wash. This removes glue, ink, and dust. Lab techs test wash water in beakers. They check pH and look for oil or dirt. The factory reuses the same water after filtering it. Each drop goes through sand filters, carbon filters, and fine screens. This saves millions of liters of water every day. Drying comes next. Heated air guns blow on flakes as they roll on a mesh belt. In seconds, flakes glow dry. They shine like clear gems. Workers check moisture with small probes. Only dry flakes move on. Clean flakes go into a float tank. The water holds flakes below but lets bits of PVC, HDPE, or PP float up. A scraper skims off floating bits. Workers empty them into bins for other plants. The PT flakes stay underwater. They then go through another rinse to remove tiny bits. After 10 rinses, flakes hit a final dryer. Now they are ready to become fiber. At a control room, engineers watch charts. They set silos to feed flakes into twin extruders. Each extruder is a long barrel with screws. A heater melts flakes at 260 degrees Celsius. Color pigments mix in. The pigments can be red, blue, green, black, or pastels. A lab tests each mix for color fastness and run tests on small strands under UV lights. The factory can make over 200 colors from recycled plastic. Molten plastic flows through pipes into spinnerets. These are metal plates with tiny holes smaller than a grain of rice. Each spinneret can have 500 holes. The melted plastic shoots out as filaments. They fly into a cool air chamber and solidify into long threads. Each spinneret can spin out kilometers of fiber every minute. The new fibers run onto a drawing line. This is a set of rollers that pull and stretch the threads two to four times their length. Stretching lines up plastic molecules so fibers become strong and springy. Workers dial roller speed and heat to keep fibers from snapping. When a thread breaks, an alarm sounds. A worker re-threads the broken end in seconds. After drawing, fibers enter a crimping machine. Crimping gives each thread tiny waves. This helps fibers cling together when spun into yarn. It also traps air and makes cloth soft to touch. A second heater sets the crimp so it stays in place. Next, fibers wind onto big drums. Each drum holds enough fiber for hundreds of t-shirts. Workers tag each drum with data, color code, production line, date, and batch number. This track code helps find problems later. Drums move on carts to the yarn hall. Here bale openers loosen fiber into a fluffy mass. The mass feeds combing machines with rows of fine teeth. 
combers remove tangles and short bits. A thin web emerges. This web coils into a loose rope called a sliver. Sliver moves to roving frames. Rollers and spindles twist and stretch sliver into a thicker thread called roving. Roving then goes to spinning frames. These machines spin roving into yarn. Each yarn strand gets a small twist to hold fibers in place. Spinning frames run day and night. They produce miles of yarn each hour. Yarn travels to the knitting and weaving rooms. High-speed knitting machines loop yarn into a stretchy fabric for t-shirts. Weaving looms interlace warp and weft yarn for denim, canvas, or drill cloth. Some looms use old-style shuttle weaving. Others are twin rapier robots swapping yarn at 500 picks per minute. Bright LED lights shine on the cloth. Workers watch for holes or stains. If they find a flaw, they mark it with chalk. The cloth then goes for dyeing. In giant vats, cloth or yarn soaks in hot dye baths with water and mild chemicals. This step lasts hours. Cloth colors soak in deep. Next, the cloth moves through huge drying tunnels. They blow hot air like car wash dryers. Lab techs taste water squeezed from the cloth to test pH. They also rub cloth on white pads to check for color transfer. Finishing comes next. Some fabrics get silicone softeners to feel smooth. Others get water repellent sprays to bead water on the surface. Fire retardant chemicals may add to fabrics for workwear or uniforms. Soft finish lines run the cloth through long rollers with foam pads. Then steam chambers set the chemicals. A few lines use CO2 dyeing. They pressurize dye and CO2 in a closed loop. This cuts water use by 90%. But CO2 lines are rare. They need high-cost gear and special safety rules. After finishing, cloth goes to automated laser cutters. They etch panels for shirts, pants, and jackets. Each panel shape comes from CAD designs. Lasers cut while sealing edges to stop fray. Panels drop into bins sorted by style and size. Next, panels go to sewing halls. Rows of sewing machines hum in unison. For a t-shirt, six stations stitch front, back, sleeves, collar, hem, and tag. Each step takes seconds. Workers use simple eye contact and small signals to pass panels down the line. Skilled sewers finish in under 10 minutes per shirt. Jeans need more steps, front pockets, back pockets, zip fly, belt loops, hemming, Jeans take up to 20 steps. Finished garments go under steam presses. Press operators guide shirts over curved boards. Steam and hot air smooth wrinkles. Then a folding robot or busy workers fold shirts into neat stacks or hang them on plastic hangers. Next is packing. Robots blow up plastic bags and zip in shirts. Other bots fill boxes with a set number of shirts or jeans. A forklift loads pallet after pallet of boxes to the shipping dock. At peak times, over 10 trucks leave every hour. Above the factory floor, offices buzz with debate. Brand reps push for lower prices. Factory bosses fight to cover costs of power, water labor, and new machines. Workers ask for fair pay and safe breaks. The factory offers free meals, bus rides, and dorm rooms to help. Outside, local pickers still gather most bottles. They work at city bins on streets and in rivers. They face rain, heat, and traffic risks. The factory funds gloves, masks, boots, and small clinics for them. It pays 30 cents per kilo of clean bottles instead of 15 cents. The extra money helps families buy school books and pay rent. To cut its carbon footprint, the plant installs solar panels on roofs. It captures waste heat from melt lines to warm wash water. They harvest rainwater for truck washes and field ponds. Water that cleans plastic goes through multi-stage filters before release. These steps save over 2 million liters of water each day. Brands advertise 100% recycled on tags, yet green experts warn of greenwash. Did the brand cut carbon or just shift costs? To prove real impact, the factory shares monthly reports online. Energy used, solar power made, water saved, waste treated, worker pay, safety metrics. Brands link to these reports on their sites. Engineers work in labs to find better ways. They mix bottle flakes with old fishing nets made of PET too. Nets add strength to fabric. They test catalysts to break PT into monomers that rebuild to virgin-grade polyester. Small reactors run these tests, but scaling to millions of tons is a big hurdle. Robots are learning new tasks. A camera-guided arm picks stray caps from flake chutes. Another robot tests flake purity and size. Engineers train AI on millions of images so robots see tiny label bits. The next step is robot arms that feed bottles from bins to the flakes line. This could cut manual sorting by half. In the garment market, you see tags saying made from eight bottles. 
A basic recycled t-shirt may cost $20. A high-end jacket with smart fibers costs $200. Some jackets have built-in LED lights, power banks, or heating wires. All start from water or soda bottles. When you buy a recycled garment, you close one loop in plastic story. A bottle becomes fiber. Fiber becomes yarn. Yarn becomes cloth. Cloth becomes a shirt. Shirt becomes trash or take back. Some brands run take back programs. They give shoppers a small gift or discount to return old clothes. Return clothes can re-enter the cleaning, flaking and spinning lines. But only a few brands have full take back. Most shirts still go to landfills within two years. A big challenge is mixed fiber clothes. A cotton poly blend cannot recycle by bottle line alone. New lines must remove buttons, labels, zippers, and separate cotton. Researchers test enzymes that break cotton apart, leaving PET ready to re-spin. Right now, the plant focuses on pure PET from bottles and nets. It plans to add trays, clamshell packaging, and old PPT toys next year. Each new feedstock needs safety checks, new wash cycles, and sometimes a new magnet or float tank to sort. This mega factory shows how science, work, and waste can meet. It turns 1.5 million bottles into clothes every day. It is a sign of hope and a warning. Factories work hard to keep up with our throwaway habits, but they also race to shape a new world where plastic trash becomes treasure. So next time you wear a shirt labeled 100% recycled, remember its journey. Think of the hands that sorted bottles. Think of the machines that sliced, washed, melted, and spun them. Think of the water and power that kept the lines running. Then ask, will we wear this shirt until it wears out? Will we send it back for recycling? The future of our planet may hinge on the answer.